Good morning. Uh, my name is Mark File, and I joined the SMART program back in 2011. And today I'll be talking to you about our research on advanced, what we're calling advanced hypergolic propellants. And for those of you who are not familiar with the term hypergolic, these are a class of rocket propellants that consist of a fuel and an oxidizer. And in this image on the top right there, the fuel is the orange powder laying on the ground, and the oxidizer is a liquid droplet that's going to fall on it. And if you could play that video. Um, so they, they essentially, they're a class of propellants that hate each other so much that when they touch, they spontaneously ignite, resulting in very quick combustion and, uh, in my opinion, a very uh, beautiful combustion event. <laughs> um, but this, this behavior, this is very quick. This is on the order of milliseconds when ignition occurs. And it results in a very unique uh, behavior that can be applied to a variety of applications. These also happen to be the highest performing rocket propellants, storable rocket propellants that the military uh, uses. But despite these two great benefits of this particular propellant combination, we hardly ever use them. And that's for a variety of reasons. The first of which is well depicted in the bottom right here. These propellants are very toxic and deadly. So those that handle them use essentially astronaut suits. And this, this is a picture of folks handling these toxic propellants. They also consist of a liquid fuel and a liquid oxidizer. That requires plumbing, tanks, valves, uh, pressurant systems. This is, results in a complex system, meaning high cost. And then if you add the additional costs associated with the, the safety and toxicity hazards of these propellants, they usually become cost prohibitive for using these propellants, except in certain applications where we really need this hypergolic behavior. So what my research focused on was to try to develop propellants that we could safely use and that would also be cost effective so we could actually use these high performing propellants in our, our fielded systems. So to accomplish that, we had a, um, two-pronged approach. The first is we took the, the traditional hypergolic fuels that we currently use and we modified them chemically. And to do that, what we did is we bonded a boron group, or which consists of a boron and three hydrogens, to the, the current hypergols. And by doing so, we found three benefits. First, we drastically reduced the toxicity of these propellants, increased their performance, and we augmented their hypergolic behavior. We also decided to take the current oxidizer and remove the, the toxic inhalation hazard, resulting in a propellant combination that is a lot less toxic and a lot easier to use. The other thing that we did is we decided to change, you know, so traditionally these fuels are liquid. Instead of using liquids, which has been done for the last 50 or 60 years when using these propellants, we decided to use a solid propellant instead which gave us a variety of benefits. The first of, off, which is, again, safety. It is very difficult to intimately mix a large quantity of liquid oxidizer and a solid piece of fuel that would result in a, in a large runaway reaction resulting in a, an explosion or a bad day. And finally, by using the solid fuel, we can coat that fuel grain with an inert surface meaning that we can make our hypergolic propellants not hypergolic until we want them to be such. We have a low toxicity, easy to handle propellants that are not as complex. So now we have propellants that have the potential to be cost effective, something that we can actually employ in our fielded systems realistically. 